much covers everything that I ended up wanting to talk about at the end of the day. So it's going to be a little bit of recap and a little bit um, just talking to you guys about um, joining in the fight and what you can do to advocate for yourself and how important it is to speak up and join our team. Um, this is just a few pictures of some of our warriors who have been in the fight. Um, Raj and Greg both have been in the fight from the beginning. This, I think, is our very first patient summit, um, which was in 2014. Um, and that's my daughter in the, far, in the far corner. She had just started her very first treatment, so she was probably three. Um, she was here a little bit ago. I don't know if you saw her, but she has grown quite a bit since then. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Warrior Program? A good bit of you. So as Dr. David mentioned, um, it's just a way for us to bring all of the patients and loved ones together. It helps to um, unite you guys, but also gives you guys a voice and a way to help raise funds and awareness for Castleman's research. As important as it is for um, the doctors and researchers to be involved, it's just as equally important to get all of you guys to be involved. Um, as many of you still know, there are so many doctors out there who have never heard of this before or who have heard of it and said, I don't really know what to do, so let's find you somebody else. That's where your voice comes in. You can start educating them, start bringing them the materials that you get from us, connecting them with us, direct them to the CDC, and allow them to enroll with our programs so that they can get the information that they need. So in order for us to continue to grow, that's where all of you guys, your voice um, really plays a big part in this. Um, I'm going to attempt to do this without crying, because my daughter makes me cry all the time. This is my daughter, and the biggest reason why I got involved. Um, she was just shy of two years old when we finally got her actual diagnosis. Um, my husband's in the military and we have gone through four deployments with him being gone. He actually missed the birth of our daughter who was in Afghanistan and I will tell you that getting her diagnosis was probably the scariest thing we've ever been through as a family. Um, she has been through a lot. Um, she has been in and out of the hospital over the past uh, four years. But as of August, we hit one year of no hospitalizations, which was an amazing <laughs> This is her now. Um, this was taken just about a month ago. Um, she's doing great. She is also on Serolimus. She um, actually hadn't grown or gained weight in about 18 months. After starting Serolimus, um, she has gained about three pounds. She's grown about two inches. She is getting all of her hair back. She has been doing fantastic. Um, her energy has come back. Um, she is the reason why, I mean, I have three children and I love them all and they all bring such an adventure and spice to our life, but she's the reason why I stand up here every single year and the reason why I love to connect with all of you. Um, I think I handle this worse than she does. She reminds me all the time that she's got this, that um, even though she has bad days and good days and sometimes she feels like crap and other times she's doing fantastic, that at the end of the day she's here and we're all in this together and that's the most important thing that I have to learn from her, her battle. Um, this is our, our fundraising. Just as a warrior team, one of the biggest things I wanted to touch on, we had a presenter stand up here, Dr. Minji Bayo, a few sessions ago, who talked to you about all the research that she's currently doing. Um, last year, our warrior program alone, so just a group of our 25 people, raised enough funds to fund her study. So we raised $45,000 as a team of 20, holding private fundraisers, um, just putting the word out there, or sharing our Facebook pages, uh, our fundraiser pages, and getting people to donate to our cause, we were able to fund the whole entire study. Now obviously this year we haven't quite hit that mark yet. Um, we still have several months left in the year. But the important thing I want to touch on about this year is this year has actually been our most active year with people um, helping to raise awareness, wanting to be involved. Um, we've had a lot of people who want to join the Warrior team. We've had a lot of people who have been posting more of their stories on Facebook. Um, we've, been all, had a, we've had a lot of people who have just really wanted to learn more and be advocates for themselves. And though the monetary value is not there, to me that seems way more important. The fact that there's so many of you who are getting engaged, you really want to take the next step and start talking about your disease out in the open is so important. These are different things that you guys can do when you join our Warrior Program. So aside from just joining, um, right away we'll create a fundraiser page for you. It's linked to our CDCN, so any funds that are donated to there goes directly to our research. Um, some of the things that have happened over the course of the past few years, we've had Facebook fundraisers, which, which has actually become very popular. So a lot of people are saying, in lieu of donating, in lieu of giving me birthday presents or whatever, please donate to a, a specific organization. And so I've seen a lot of people use the, the CDCN. Um, this is a great way just to put the word out. It goes on Facebook, people can just donate, and that money comes directly to us. And it's something simple that we can all we can all do. It doesn't require a lot of effort. It's just a simple post, and it directs everybody to not only donate money, but to learn more about it, because it, it connects to our page. Um, the Amazon Smile program, how many of you are familiar with that? Okay, so 
you would actually go to Amazon Smile instead of just Amazon.com. Anything that you purchase through there, a certain portion can be donated to a specific organization. You pick the CDC in one time. I actually think it's CARE. It's just CARE. Um, you pick CARE one time, and then after that, anytime you shop and purchase things through uh, Smile.Amazon, a 5% donation is made back to the CDCN. At the end of the year, I don't know how many of you shop like I do, but between birthday presents and Christmases and three kids, we donated quite a bit of money last year. So it, it doesn't cost you anything more. It doesn't cost anything more. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to touch on a couple of these in my next slides, but here's just a few other examples that you guys can make. You can hold garage sales, lemonade <laughs> stands, night out at your local restaurants. Um, these warrior bracelets that we have out front, you can start selling them as well. We're going to be able to um, send those to you guys and allow you guys to be selling those in your communities. Um, and all of our swag items that are on our actual page, you guys can also help promote and get people to buy those, which also raises awareness that then those funds come back to us. This is amazing. Um, our, this is our first ever World Pass Events Disease Day. I know as a team, we are all very excited about it. We were a little nervous to see how successful it would be, and it took social media by storm. I was so shocked. Every single time I went on to Facebook that day, every single picture I saw was somebody in blue, somebody who was promoting um, Castleman's disease. I don't know the, the definitive number that we brought in, but we brought in several thousand dollars just from people promoting Castleman's disease on our first ever day. First ever, first ever day, sorry. Um, these are just some of the people, some of the photos that we were able to capture. It's just people like you and I, patients and their, and their families who just came together, they wore blue, they had their wristbands, they went out into the community, they were telling everybody like, oh, it's Castleman's Disease Day, and it was just amazing to see that. And we're hoping to carry this momentum forward into the next year as well. <coughs> um, Ashley could not come here this year, but she joined our Warrior team last year, um, and she actually hit the ground running. We got a, a Facebook page created for her right away, um, she immediately sent it out to all of her family and friends. She started getting donations that came in. Then she decided she wanted to hold a garage sale at her house, which she did. Um, and she brought in over $750 that she did not keep. She turned back over right into her Warrior fundraiser page and donated it to research. Um, I get a lot of people who I connect with constantly asking, what can we do in our hometowns? You know, we're not here. We're not able to attend the galas. We can't always come to the summit. Things like this are just small, small um, things that you can do in your, own, in your own hometown that allows you guys to bring up the awareness there and raise, even if it's five dollars, five dollars is more than we didn't have before. Alice is actually here somewhere. There she is. Um, Alice's niece and nephew had a lemonade stand um, in North Huntington Beach. Um, they raised eight hundred dollars that they put towards research, and this, these are children. These. Kiddos stood there and sold lemonade to anybody that walked past. Um, they brought in all this money that they then turned around and donated in, Alice, in Alice's honor. Um, Alice has had a tremendously difficult battle, but she's doing fantastic. Um, these are all ways that we can not only celebrate the milestones that we make as uh, loved ones and patients, but also to get your family involved. I mean, these, these children wanted to do something to honor their aunt, and they were able to stand there and sell lemonade and bring in this money for our organization. So I just actually want to offer that to you. Um, most of you have been here before know that each year I actually bring up um, Elise, who Kim and Nick Driscoll um, have been a part of our organization from day one. Um, I'm going to talk bo about both of these two briefly, and then I'm going to um, dive more into Kim and Nick. Elise passed away about four and a half years years ago from her battle with Castleman's disease. And the picture on the right is um, Lisa Canty. She passed away this May after 12 weeks of battling Castleman's disease. Now, any single person that we hear in the CDCN community that passes away hits our team. Like, it, it's terrible. We all get very emotional about it. It's hard to learn that somebody who is battling this gets that sick and un unfortunately passes away. These two really hit home for us. They're pediatric cases. Both of them got very sick very fast. Neither one of them, no matter what interventions anybody in our team or their doctors were able to do, we weren't able to change the course of what happened here. Um, both of them, Elise was 13, Lisa was 15, um, and both of their families, though Kim and Nick are extremely involved, um, Lisa's mother, Diana, also wants to be involved. Um, I want to talk a lot about Kim and Nick. The Driscoll family holds a ride in honor of, of their daughter every single year. Um, I love them both very much. They touch my heart. Just listening to the story, the, the, the battle that they have had, 
the fact that they lost their daughter to this disease. The reason why it's so inspiring is that when you are suffering from a grief that is that terrible, when you are trying to manage your own pain, um, it's very difficult to turn around and try to help everybody else. These two do it every single day. They reach out to our community. They try to connect all of you guys with each other. They offer support even when sometimes they're having her time themselves. Um, they do this in honor of their daughter, and I know how difficult that battle is, but you guys are an amazing inspiration. I love you both very much. because it not only talks a little bit more about what they do, um, but it also shows just their true testament to what a Kassaman warrior is. They endured probably one of the worst battles that they've ever endured in their life. They lost their daughter to this disease, but they still every single day wake up living in her honor and sharing what this disease is with everybody else and trying to help as many people as they can. Um, I would have loved to have the opportunity to meet Elise. I know my daughter would have as well, but they're an inspiration. And it just is a small example of what we can all do. We can all come together. We can join the warrior team. We can offer support to each other. Um, I know how scary it is and how alone sometimes each of us must feel because you think there's nobody else around me who's going through this. There is. And if we connect together and we continue to empower each other and we join our warrior team and we do this together, I know that in the next few years we'll definitely see some amazing changes happen not only from the work of the doctors and researchers who are driving all of this, but from each one of you having a voice and helping us raise the awareness. So, you're up. I just also want to um, reflect briefly on um, uh, you know, just how special we just bizarre to us. We, um, we, we love the two of them, and they're just um, such special people. Think about Elise all the time. And just, as, just as Malala said, every passing of these patient um, that passes away when you hear about that, we're really just devastated to hear that. And, and that really pushes our team to work harder. We um, have a wall in our office that have um, 
pictures of a number of you guys up on it. Um, motivated us to Dallas, Rogers, and the board here. Um, and then there's also patients on that board that have passed away, and, um, and they really um, push us even harder. Um, one thing that we um, have been trying to do more recently, um, and, and Tim and Nick have done this, is to work with these families that have lost a loved one to get those uh, those families to enroll their patients into Accelerate. And the reason we're really pushing for that is that it's those patients um, that, that the disease was, um, the disease ended up uh, causing them to pass away. Those are the patients that we really need to learn the most from so that we can figure out how to stop it for future patients. And so we spent a lot of time um, studying those cases in particular and figuring out you know, what is it about those patients for why they didn't make it? Because we want to do everything we can um, to, to prevent that and stop it for all the time. 